talking about driver training and orientation. Um, of all of the places that you've visited, how many have uh, a driver trainer? Maybe 30%. How many of those driver trainers are qualified driver trainers? 5%. Okay. Uh, so what we're looking at here, and, and I wanted Shane to bring this up, is something that is quite easy for us to take care of internally. There are numerous programs. There's Kim, the Triple LC. There's all kinds of programs that are available, and these are quite affordable programs, and one of the best things that you can do is have somebody in your office step forward and take one of those programs. Because, Felicia, back me up. One of the things that we're going to hear is qualified, a qualified person that is, that is training these people. So do you want to run with that for a second? Um, yes, so a, a qualified person, from my perspective, qualified means that you are training these drivers, obviously, but what does training mean? It means that you're having these drivers come in, you're testing them on hours of service, push rod, how to do inspection. You don't just cross your fingers and hope that they know because they, they, they have the raise that license and think, well, that's good enough. You have to be testing them to 100% or mastery, as, as we call it. So like, what that means is if you test them on these areas and then you see that there's deficiencies, that's not good enough. Because when I receive your material, I'm going to go, okay, well, what did you do to make sure that he has, um, that this person has, uh, ha knows the right answer to that specific question. So you have to be testing them to 100%. So you have to give them the right answer. Um, you know, there's some companies here that will, pass the test off to other people to market um, or they have an automatic program that will tell you the correct test so it's not good enough for me when I get your training material your driver training material and there's questions on it that are are completely missing or they're, they're incorrect because that shows weaknesses in the eyes of the court um, and just one more thing from, from my perspective on, on driver training um, it's so important to be detailed. I get I get driving training policies all the time that aren't signed, that aren't dated, um, and then I say, well, where, why, you know, you have a signature at the bottom and a date for this person to sign, but you never have them sign off on it. Again, that, that in the court's eyes, that's a deficiency. Well, how do I know that this specific driver was trained on hours of service? Um, so you have to be detailed. Um, they have to be dated. Training does, doesn't just end right out of the gate either. Um, in the eyes of the court, you have to be showing that you regularly train your drivers. You know, just because a driver starts on board, he may understand how to, uh, how to, um, uh, how to uh, uh, inspect the brakes, but he may get lazy or he may forget down the road. And it's so important that it's a continuous thing. It's just, it doesn't end. It doesn't end day one. You have to be showing to the court that you know every year you do driver training and every year you have those drivers sign and date off that they that they inspected and they you tested them to 100 percent That is perfection in, in, in the court's eyes. That what you just brought up is an enormous pitfall that we see uh, on more carriers than, than we'd like to. Uh, somebody comes in at orientation, and if the orientation itself is, is decent, like we see uh, quite often we'll see two or three hours of orientation. Hey, there's your keys. And, you know, uh, uh, from our side, and, and I'm sure you'd see as well, it, it, orientation takes as long as it takes. There's no three hours, there's no three days, there's no two weeks. It's as long as it takes for that person you brought up to speed that, or to the guidelines that you have set yourself. It's it's that simple. It's, it, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be after, uh, you're not trying to set time records here to get this person out on the road, regardless of what operations is saying. Yes, sir. And just add on to it, as, from a regulator standpoint, um, qualified person, you have to show that they are, have the relevant knowledge, training, and experience in that. So you're talking about the driver trainer now? Yeah, yeah, driver trainer. So if you're not know, qualified, sure, you can assign somebody to investigate an accident and use our qualified person. How are they qualified? What is their training and having the knowledge, training, and experience, but then also having, like you said, with the signatures, right? So you have to be able to show the first diligence. If an accident or something happens, it's as easy as an employee saying, I never received that training, I never understood, it all falls back on the employer. You have to have them sign it, you have to ensure their understanding. And different types of training, right? Some people are very different types of training, so offering that, but showing that someone's qualified is what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. In case uh, anyone does know Tara, Tara's with the, she's with the feds. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
we, we've touched on the, the, the training and type sub, but, uh, um, or, or the, the trainers, but, but what about the training itself? Um, there's a, a lot of small organizations, large organizations seem to have all their, their training in mind. They've got a, a staff of driver trainers. These trainers have been certified by another uh, verifiable source. Um, what about, um, um, let's outsource this, let's, uh, let's go uh, online. Uh, what are your feelings on, on, on that, John? Great compliment to face-to-face -face training by all means. Um, I think we've been a big supporter. It's not a end-all, be-all. I don't believe that uh, online training should be the last resort. It should be complementary to everything else that you're doing. It's going to simplify the opportunity to touch base with each driver. We know that these guys are gone all week long. Uh, to bring them home and do training sessions on the weekend when they want to be with their families and want to spend time at home it is tough uh, to have to sit with the company for three, four hours on a Saturday you know, to do that, it's tough. And am I going to get buy-in when I'm already tired after putting in 60 plus hours? So, but if I can do online training at my leisure and get it done throughout various times of the week, I'm going to keep my knowledge based on it.